When I was 12, my mom passed away from overdose. I had a stepdad and stuff. He was cooking barbecuing, and uh, he told me to wake up my mother. So I went to the room to wake up my mom, and she was uh, like gargling. So I found my mother dead, like basically. So it was just, it was very like, I feel like it was like what triggered me really to have like depression and stuff like that. So I went to the fo uh, foster foundation, like foster system basically. I was bounced around like six different foster parents. So it's like, I never had like a, a stable foundation. I graduated high school homeless. So I started using like really bad words, like not controllable it was at the age of 17. So I started like popping Xanax or ecstasies or Adderall and we went to weed. And then next you know, it was like crystal meth. And then I smoked a little bit of heroin. So it just led to a, like a, a downfall basically. I got addicted and went up at age 18 and my ex-boyfriend introduced me to the drugs uh, when my family found out they didn't know how to handle it so they took it out on me and they were like abusive and my dad has anger problems and so he beat me up like when he found out I started using drugs and my sister too my mom just watched and didn't do nothing. Like She didn't know how to handle it. I grew up with addicts. My mom's an addict, my dad's an addict, and then uh, I also have a father that's done a lot of prison time that's an addict as well. So it's been pretty rough. We'll say like 10 years old, I started abusing my prescription medication. I do have a mental health diagnosis of ADHD, ADD, and they noticed that at a really young age. And that's how I started my medication. And then I started using my mom at 14 years old. She's the one that put me on the medication at a young age. And ever since then, I've been on some type of drug, narcotic, uh, and it's been pretty rough. Ended up being with the troubled kids as I was growing up. I was homeless. Like, I, I left Las Vegas Rescue Mission because I relapsed there and they didn't want to take me no more. So I got put on the streets and a homeless man took me to Crossroads. And it was like, it was I think it was like a gift from God or something like that, you know, trying to show me like, life's not over for you yet. You, you still got a chance, you still got a fighting chance in this world. Crossroads helped me a lot. They showed me things that I, I didn't know was possible. When I first went to treatment, it helped me a lot. I felt safe, a new life, like a new beginning, a new me. A sober me. I would probably be like on the streets, homeless, if I didn't get the scholarship. I was lost. I didn't know what I was going to do aftercare. Like, I've got places to go out here, but those places to go obviously had, had like led me and ended me up where I was in the situation before I had to take this opportunity. You know, so I was I was worried. I was I didn't know what the situation was going to be. I didn't know where I was going to be in a couple months. As soon as I solidified something by the Derek Waller Foundation, I. I I just felt at ease and just been able to, to be calm and relaxed and not have to worry no more. You know, I know I'm going to be able to be all right. You know, if you don't have enough in the, in the bank, you know, you aren't, you aren't able to access that enough. And for me, I was able to go to an a, a amazing rehab facility. Like you're talking a 30 day stay was north of $60,000. I wanted to focus on uh, you know, the inpatient and the aftercare because that was my experience and that was what helped me out, changed my mind, changed my thinking, changed me from the inside out from a spiritual perspective. And I want people to experience what I felt, you know, make sure that people are having that opportunity to really you know, get honest about themselves and not just continue to you know, run through their life wearing masks and you know, just acting like everything's okay when really everything is falling apart. I want to make it available to as, every, as many people as possible. You know, I'm going to keep putting up my own money. You know, the people that support the foundation are, are going to donate to this because this is, this is what really matters. You know, we don't want people to live life uh, underneath, you know, what is really truly possible for them. You know, we don't want to let their insecurities or their trauma or any problems that they've experienced to continue to hold them back any longer than they already have. So we want just them to experience freedom. I would say thank you very much and the opportunity that you guys do give us and give the people in this community is an opportunity that many people don't get in life. And if I was able to say one thing to each one of you is just thank you very much and I really appreciate the opportunity that you guys have given me and are continuing to give me and I'll be able to show you guys in my future that you guys didn't make a bad choice. I appreciate everything they have done for me because I would have been dead. Uh, I'm still alive and I'm thankful I'm still alive. I would give him a hug and say thank you. I would say I'm very grateful and blessed that you guys actually care about people like me, people that have a drug addictions. I'm just very grateful and blessed.